Are you familiar with pre-workout supplements, also called pre-workouts? Pre-workout supplements are under the category of dietary supplements that are supposed to give you a boost of energy when you exercise and enhance your focus and performance. People take them 30 minutes to an hour before starting their workouts. That is to give them time for the effect to kick in. Some come in pills, others come in a powdered form which are added to beverages. What do you think about this trend? Welcome my friends. I'm here with another video about pre-workout supplements or pre-workouts and how they may help you lose weight. We will dive deep into the ins and outs and pros and cons of using these products to help you make an informed decision to use them or not to use them. Click on the link in the description of this video to access your free one day keto friendly meal plan. This is Gerald, your health coach and chef. Let's begin. For an overview, pre-workouts are very popular among professional athletes, regular gym goers, and fitness enthusiasts. Because a lot of times, we may not be 100% prepared for action. They take these supplements. Pre-workouts are proclaimed to boost energy and mental alertness during workouts and help your body recover from the stresses and fatigues brought about by the intense routines. There are different kinds of pre-workout supplements, depending on your goal and the benefits you want to gain. I will break this down into detail a little later in this video, but the effects last from 30 minutes to 2 hours from the time of intake. You either take them as tablets or use the powder form and mix them in your favorite drink 30 minutes before your workout. What was life before pre-workout? The old school bodybuilders of the 1960s to 1980s, when no one knew about pre-workouts, athletes would drink cups of coffee before their workout. Sergio Oliva is a Cuban-American bodybuilder popularly known in bodybuilding business as The Myth. He was the only bodybuilder to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger for the Mr. Olympia title, and he is known to carry around a thermos of coffee during his training. When asked why, he said it gave him energy, also made him sweat. He drank coffee only after his workouts. Protein shakes, sports drinks, and fat burners were non-existent back then. This was doubly so for pre-workouts. There were no engineered foods to help support the special needs of these athletes. Maybe the earliest engineered foods these bodybuilders and powerlifters sculpted down were liver pills. Mm. When and how did the first pre-workouts start? The first pre-workout, Ultimate Orange, was created in 1982 by Dan Duchesne in California. It quickly gained popularity among bodybuilders, but got into some legal issues when consumers claimed one of its ingredients ephedra, caused high blood pressure, seizures, cardiac arrhythmia, strokes, and heart attacks. Today, there are countless pre-workouts on the market with different claims. But hey, champ, you have to be mindful of what you take. What's in your pre-workout? It's important to know what you want to achieve in choosing your pre-workout supplement and the type of physical training or workout you'll be doing. This is because the ingredients in pre-workouts have a very specific action and you have to choose the pre-workouts with the ingredients that you need. For example, do you want to improve and increase your endurance or increase your lean body mass and get bulk and muscle? Here are some of the ingredients you need to watch out for or look for and their specific action. Number one, the first an original pre-workout supplement has always been caffeine because caffeine is a natural stimulant. Don't you notice these things when you drink your regular cup of joe? Feelings of alertness and energy, reduced fatigue, increased physical and motor performance. Why do people drink cups and cups of coffee at night when they need to work or stay up late or even during long drives? Science has proven that, aside from the effects mentioned earlier, 
Coffee also decreases mental fatigue and increases the ability to concentrate and focus attention, among other things. This is not at all surprising that many pre-workouts use caffeine in their formulations because of its many benefits. However, as a small caveat, when drinking coffee or caffeine, consider caffeine's half-life. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for the supplement to be reduced by half in your body. The mean half-life of caffeine in the blood of healthy individuals is about 5 hours, meaning if you took 160 milligrams of caffeine, you would still have 80 milligrams of caffeine in your blood after 5 hours. So, for people who are sensitive to caffeine, please beware. Number 2. Next is beta-alanine. Beta-alanine is a non-essential amino acid. It has been pitched as an athlete's best-kept secret. How does it work? When a person takes beta-alanine, this non-essential amino acid combines with histidine to produce carnosine. Carnosine is what controls muscle pH and lactic acid buildup, resulting in enhanced workout performance by increasing exercise capacity increasing power output, and decreasing muscle fatigue. One study done by the International Society of Sports Nutrition showed that professional rowers improved their speed by 4.3 seconds over a 2,000 meters in a seven-week study. Endurance cyclists saw an average increase of 11.4% in peak power output after eight weeks. Collegiate football players significantly increased their strength after supplementing with a combination of beta-alanine and creatine. High-intensity interval training, or HIT, athletes showed improved endurance, performance, and lean body mass during a six-week trial. By the looks of it, beta-alanine is not just a passing craze and is trusted by professional athletes. In fact, Nicole Stout, Team Judo athlete Todd Durkin, internationally recognized strength and speed conditioning coach and body worker, use beta alanine as part of their workouts. Number three, this next one got into the mainstream and gained popularity after the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona when Linford Christie, a 100 meter gold medalist, and Sally Gunnell, a 400 meter hurdles gold medalists claim creatine helped them prepare for their grueling games. How does creatine work? In simple terms, creatine reduces the fatigue and maximizes hypertrophy by increasing muscle growth, muscular power, and muscular endurance, increases in speed and total force. Creatine does all that because creatine makes ATP. Remember when we talked about ATP or adenosine triphosphate in our carbohydrate video? We said that ATP is our body's energy currency. Taking this supplement will ensure your muscles are supplied with the energy it needs to support your intense workouts. In short, your body will rely on creatine to make ATP when your body runs low on energy. Other supplements are Thyrosine and taurine reduces stress to help the brain keep from being distracted and focus like a laser on the task at hand. Number five, niacin, also known as vitamin B3, gives extra pump in demanding workouts and also helps with converting food into energy. This means that this vitamin will help you lose some of your stubborn body fat. Number six, L-citrulline and arginine helps in blood vessel expansion, allowing better flow and delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the muscles. This leads to better recovery from effort and reduces muscle fatigue. Agmatine dulls pains. Number eight, Rodelia rosea reduces stress and improves mood. And number nine, creatine increases overall strength and power output. 
So, what ingredients should you avoid? Sports nutritionist Matt Lovell points out that there are some pre-workout products that should actively avoid. He said, I would say any speed cousins, amphetamine cousins. Some pre-workouts basically contain ecstasy or close to it, says Lovell. According to the Food and Chemical Toxicology, 400 milligrams of caffeine a day is the upper limit for adults. To illustrate, a 238-gram cup of instant coffee contains 61.6 milligrams of caffeine. An 8-ounce brewed cup of coffee from Starbucks contains 180 milligrams of caffeine. A McDonald's 12-ounce coffee contains 109 milligrams of caffeine. Some pre-workouts contain as much as 410 milligrams of caffeine. This is way over the speed limit, guys. Take note and avoid those brands. So, are pre-workouts dangerous? Generally speaking, based on the ingredients list we have mentioned, they are harmless. Only when you use brands containing safe levels of ingredients. Always read the labels and take note of its ingredients. Knowing what are acceptable ingredients and how much each ingredient you should take are crucial to getting the benefits of each component. And follow the manufacturer's instructions in the preparation. Do not exceed measurements. Consuming more than recommended means you are taking a higher dosage of each ingredient. And that's not right. It does not necessarily mean better. Also, be aware of your own personal threshold. Not everyone is built the same. You might be more sensitive to one ingredient while your friend is not. So observe yourself for adverse reactions. And as always, proceed with caution. Drop a note in the comments and let us know what you learned from this video today. I will be sure to reply to you and mention your name. Thanks for watching the video. And I hope this video helps you to understand certain principles and habits that are beneficial when it comes to choosing your food wisely and losing weight and creating a new, healthy, paleo lifestyle. If you're interested in watching more videos like this one, click the link in the description for your one-day keto-friendly meal plan. Then, hit the subscribe button and change its color to a beautiful red. See you in the next video.